We're rolling here. We're rolling there. We are with Kim McCollum, author of What Happens in Montana. This is a novel about friendship, betrayal, and forgiveness among four women at a hot springs retreat in Montana. Look at us. Just a bunch of writers all sitting around talking shop. This is fun. You almost um, stuck your thumb in my eye just now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what writers do. Uh, look at us. <laughs> this is your first novel. It uh, is. After a pretty cliche backstory of uh, majoring in Japanese and working on Wall Street. Exactly. Yeah, you know, what's next? Writing, of course. What <laughs> inspired you to ditch stability? Kids, I guess. Kids. I mean, yeah. You know, they I, always I, shake I, it up. But they <laughs> totally do. Yeah, I had moved. I was living in Denver, actually, when I had my first kid, but I was still working kind of Wall Street-ish at Janus Mutual Funds. And I was, it, I was on the international side, and I was able to use my Japanese in Denver, not in New York, which didn't make sense to me, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> I loved, I loved, loved, loved that job and always thought I would go back. But then, you know, I had this little 10 week old baby and I start searching at daycares and I was like, oh, I just, I just couldn't do it. So, and I didn't have to, I'm lucky enough. I know so many people yeah. do. And I was lucky enough that we made that decision and I stayed home for 20 years. And then I said, okay, now uh, what? <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. We went through that. I actually made, I went back to work for a little bit um, and had this like hour long commute and a nanny that cost so much mm -hmm. uh, anyway, but yeah, I ended up staying home with my first and mm -hmm. loved it. it was great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just stay home and teach your kid Japanese. I tried right. that. They would get no. so mad. Mama, speak English. And now they're, you know, older, like see, 21 and 18, my daughters anyway. Yeah. And then my 16 year old is the only one left at home. And uh, they both are like, Mom, why didn't you speak Japanese to us? And one of them's pretty good. And she um, studied in Tokyo last oh, nice. last semester, I think it was, or two semesters ago. And the other one has learned it a little bit as That's well. Awesome. So, yeah. Good for you. Late yeah. in life. <laughs> yeah. I taught, I didn't teach my kids any languages. I taught them Disney's, I think. Um, mm, I went to a, Disneyland. It's a not lot actually a language. When they were well, that's a testament to you as a mom. I don't have the patience for any of the Disney's. <laughs> oh my God. No, I, I am, I am never growing up. I'm probably their age mentally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yes, so your writing style is very approachable and humorous, which we very much admire. Um, do you have any kind of experience in joke writing or comedy? Oh, gosh, no, no. But I, I'm glad you found it funny because that, yeah. you know, you, I, there are a lot of different like webinars and stuff and they make it sound so scary to try to write funny stuff. And mm -hmm. I just wrote it. So. Yeah, it just came out. So that's uh, yeah. just your yeah. It's probably your personality coming through. I yeah, think. and my girlfriends, like the 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 four women who go on the reunion, are loosely based. Well, their personalities are pretty close to my actual girlfriends, who I really did meet when our babies were babies in Las Vegas, oh, wow. and we do do reunions you every had a few mommy years. And me group we of friends, did. just like the book. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yes, that's awesome. And they're very funny, and they're quirky, and they all have you know totally different personalities, totally different backgrounds, and. So so that was helpful. So you met them in Las Vegas. Where do they live now? Like Two are still in Vegas. Okay. And then one um, lives, let's see. Well, yeah, she's outside of Chicago. But in the book, she's outside of D.C. So oh, wow. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> That's all, and tell me about the idea for the book. Where did it come from? Is this like a bolt of lightning hit you? Or have you had this idea kind of rattling around for a while? It's funny. It was actually two books. Um, it was, it's been eight years in the making for this book to finally come to fruition. Um, I had written half of a girlfriend reunion type book and half of a historical fiction about, a, a, you know, prostitution in Butte in the 1920s. Well, actually, the main idea was I learned that 18% of Montana's original homesteaders were single women. Often yeah. with children. Is mm -hmm. it, can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, raising a child with all of the, mm -hmm. you know, modern conveniences is still hard. But now you're in like a 12 by 12 homestead with no insulation, usually yeah. like in eastern Montana mm -hmm. with a child by yourself. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I would have <laughs> Lots of my threats head with out a there. Razor blade and gone off into the woods. Probably. <laughs> oh, gosh. <Yeah>. Bad mom. <laughs> Terrible decision. <laughs> <laughs> scalped myself get out of here so you, know? you were thinking about writing a book about that yeah and so i had and written half. Kind of merged the two 
and I, I know this now, you're supposed to write the ending early on in the process mm -hmm. because you get to the saggy middle, as it's called, and then you think, oh, this is crap. Nobody's <laughs> going to want to read this. And where am I going from here? So I had gotten to that point with these two books. And then I had started a Harvard MFA, and I ended up getting about halfway through. And then I found a publisher and finished my book, and I thought, well, I guess I don't need this anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I learned a ton about writing and and the process. They don't teach you about finding a publisher, which I didn't know going in. Right. Um, but I learned a ton, and then yeah, they told me about writing the end, and through some of these classes, I was able to weave it together. Yeah, you think finding a publisher would be like one of the because I mean that's the one of the biggest hurdles for writers. They're like, I've written this great thing, my opus, and I have nowhere to take it. I'm just gonna <laughs> put it. I guess I'll have a blog now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm still kind of shocked. I would think it would benefit these MFA programs if they would help their students get published, but yeah. No, nope. it's definitely not on the agenda. Trade yeah, secrets. I, I mean, it's a good you know? thing you. It's a good thing you didn't finish. You know? I, well, yeah, I figured <laughs> I don't need to give them more money. I don't need that piece of paper. I'm yeah, good. <laughs> it's expensive. It's yeah. cool. Um, so one of the main characters in your book is a 19th century prostitute. Mm -hmm. um, did you do a lot of research on Montana and the whole prostitution? murder industry that was going on back then she's also a ghost <laughs> she is a she's ghost. a ghost yeah I'm sorry i meant to say ghost <laughs> yeah yeah she's a ghost and she's simone which is the name of the real ghost that supposedly haunts this hot springs where it's set i kept her name the same but i guess other than you know i tried to research this actual ghost and you know they don't know they just think that she was a prostitute from butte and so i thought well Let's make up a fun backstory. And yeah, the research is fascinating. But very cool. And thanks for doing the research because we do have a like crazy history when it comes to like it's women in Montana and like yeah, the prostitution industry, yeah. madams, all of that. Yeah, I went and did the tours and stuff underground and learned about all that. Went up nice. to Haver and wow. toured around there. It's it, there's I've some heard good there's stuff. like a really weird uh, tour you can go on in Butte mm -hmm. where yeah. like the rooms have not been changed yes. since the 1800s. The Dumas brothel tour. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's one thing, my audio. I love my narrator for the audio book. Uh -huh. But she calls it, uh, how does she, she doesn't say Dumas, she says Dumas. Oh, no. Ah, ah. Ah. <laughs> yes, you should have put the emphasis on the ah. You got you to give notes in you that You don't situation. get to. You don't get, oh. I was able to choose my narrator, which was cool, because I know a lot of authors, it's just done, and they're like, oh, they don't even know. But I got to choose her, and I love her, you know, inflection and, and how yeah. she brings the characters to life, but. She just doesn't know about thing. Dumas. So, so when well. you're listening to the audio book, that's one <laughs> situation where you know <laughs> you got one up on the narrator, which is good. So you said that it's kind of based loosely on one certain hot springs. The one in the book is is a holistic, very granola uh, retreat with a garden um, and dilapidated buildings. It, it, did, how much have you fictionalized here? I don't know if there was a garden um i did go and stay there it okay. does exist and it's it's based pretty closely on a place that there was a detour heading to canyon ferry lake in the summer and we drove by and from the the road it looks like this majestic place i said to my you know my current husband who's been here 30 years what is that and of course he knows like everything and he told me what it was and its history i mean it used to Teddy Roosevelt stayed there in the 1930s. You know, it used to be this big, famous place. It's in the mission style from California, which was not out here. Crazy. Yeah. And so now they've only fixed up a small portion, and that's where you stay. Um, and, yeah, I did, the hot springs are different than than the real hot springs. So some things are changed, but the kind of sure, the holistic cause... part is, yeah, it's right. very, it's supposed to be dry, although I snuck out to a bar because it was kind of creepy and I needed to go. It's dry. <laughs> it's I had dry. no idea. Wow. Because uh -huh. okay. I've been to Chico and they grow food there and have all the different buildings. So I wasn't, I wasn't sure, but that's, it's all, uh, it's very fun to read in the book and kind of picture, you know, the, the experiences that, that I've had in yeah. In I'm glad that she goes not dry. I feel yeah. like that's kind of I, the fun I don't, part about she. How would they survive? It, it, wow. it is. I mean, you got to <laughs> soak and have a drink. And yeah. I think it's yeah. more it fun. Nice. important part of the process. Mm -hmm. So you have a group of friends like the mommy and me group, like uh, that you have in the book, um, and you've stayed in contact with them uh, yes. over the years. Yep. Um, 
are the characters in your book, like are the personalities based on your actual friends? Yeah. And in fact, they flew in. I did my book launch party last week and they flew in for it. And a bunch of people wanted them to sign the book as well. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's Which is so kind great. of fun. Yeah. They've so all read it, I take it. They have. Are they yeah. flattered? Yeah. yeah. Is There's a, mad? There are a couple <laughs> things I think they weren't thrilled about. I'm like, I'm sorry. Oh, how funny. You were like, I'm sorry. It's, it's a story. That well, I, I switched it around, guys. though, you know, like, so I had their names start with the same first letter okay. so that I could keep track of who I, the personality yeah. that I wanted for each one and that it would stay consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and then I changed around backstories to belong to different people and I of right. course exaggerated them but the personalities yeah, yeah were... it's always hard when you exaggerate a personality <laughs> yeah. because then the person thinks oh wow am I like that exactly yeah understood, <laughs> yes. understood. without revealing too much about the ending do, do you have any sequels in mind it's funny I'm wor the book I'm working on is not related at all um, but I've had quite a few fans, luckily enough, who want more of these yeah. characters. So I'm considering, and I mean, this is very much, you know, somebody dies at the beginning and we find out what happens at the end. So it's hard to have more, but I guess I could have the personalities and the characters doing something different at some point. Sure. Yeah. Is that hard to find the time? I mean, you've got three kids, um, you're writing stuff. I'm sure that you're still working on like getting publicity out there for this is it hard to find that time like where do you set aside time to write a novel i ended up having to sign up for a now novel like little course thing where they kind oh. of have write-ins they call it and okay. because with book number two i was having so much trouble getting myself to sit in the chair and do it exactly um and so there's this you know nine to ten every five days a week there's at least other people online with you doing it and it's funny how a little thing like that'll make you it do will. it yeah and i do have two step children too so i have five but there's only oh one goodness. left at home so oh my goodness yeah we've got a just turned 15 year old so we feel your pain yeah he's 16. <laughs> it's an interesting time in our life i was working at the school today uh and he saw me in the hallway and i told him i was like can you at least acknowledge me when you see me in the hallway? Because I think it's probably worse that you don't acknowledge me because your friends would be like, why did you just ignore your mom like she didn't exist? Um, so he saw me today and it was a big deal because he nodded his head. He did this. Oh. I was like, oh, that's an igno Thank you. Too oh, kind, so good to see you. Too kind yeah, of I know. I just, I was beaming. You so, gave he, birth to this boy. Does he say like, what up, ka? Like Nothing. I get called ka. Oh, no. I don't get ka yet. Or bruh. Cut or bra. Yeah. Oh, nice. I haven't yeah. gotten cut or bra, but he does try to call me by my first name. I'm like, that's not your Yeah, no, no, no. Michelle. Mm -hmm. No, it's mom. Yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. mom. <laughs> the film producer here. Uh, so I have to ask, are you thinking Sorry, screenplay? Wheezes. Got feelings. That's our dog. Are you, are you thinking of adapting this into a screenplay? I've thought about it. I've had a, like my parents know a few people kind of in the industry and they've said, you know, with the hotness of i don't know what the popularity is what i should say of montana yeah. right. you know and with you know the 1920s butte thing and the mm -hmm. underground and prohibition and um you know there's a lot of imagery with the hot springs and the characters um and, and maude is kind of the 80 year old almost you know almost 80 year old chef who's just quirky i think of kind of betty white when i think of her oh, nice. so there's you know this fun cast of characters the fun setting so it would be a fun thing to watch i would think so absolutely okay. <laughs> something there yeah no no everybody loves a, a good uh montana story especially these days but like montana there's not enough uh montana stories that are modern with uh female leads and also i don't know it, ta it takes a modern spin on friendships and also this awesome state do you still go back to that hot springs? No, is what once, I'm once was enough. Okay, <laughs> just checking. Yeah, you guys are fodder for your book with one visit. I do know some people who love it and they love, yeah. you know, that it's quirky and creepy and um, yeah. possibly haunted and, yeah. you know, and the and dry, but that's not exactly my thing. It's not your favorite. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of haunted places in Montana. Yeah. Red Lodge. I went to, we stayed in that hotel in Red Lodge once that was like absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, 
I was smashed up against Joe for the entire evening because I don't like sleeping with ghosts. Like, it's fun to, like, walk through a ghost, uh, you know, town or a house that might be haunted, but, like, sleeping, I'm not. Yeah, I, I was totally sleep. fine until I think about 8 p.m., I want to say, and then right. I was like, hmm, there's a bar. I'm going to Uber over there. <laughs> <laughs> get myself a couple drinks because sitting here alone with yes. this ghost is not so no. much fun. I think I sleep better with a ghost in the room. You probably do. Yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> anyway. So this is just a, a dumb little game for us. We're all writers. And so we're going to do a writing game called Mad Lib Writing Lab. Uh-oh. Okay. All right. So I have no I, idea. He, just, he likes to spring these on me. Hot seat. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. So if you want to get the M&M jar here. Okay. And you are going to pick out. I've I've designed some uh we got characters, location, and wild card. I need you to get one of one each. Of... So we'll just keep drawing until we have one of each. Okay, just so read it as read you it? as okay. you pull it out. Okay. Wild card. Everyone they have encountered is revealed to be androids. Oh, okay. okay. So we have our wild card. Okay. Mm -hmm. When is an android like a robot? I feel like hey, yeah. an idiot. I don't yeah. know sci-fi very well. I think of like uh, not iPhones when I think of androids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is like robot people. Okay. okay. All right. I'm okay. so mad at you for eating garlic today. I'm sorry. Just the worst. <laughs> uh, the last timber mill in Montana? The, okay. So that's our location. Okay. The last working timber mill in Montana. Goodness. Okay. All right. In, in fact, I have a friend who wrote a book with this crazy action scene where this guy is fighting Sasquatch at a timber mill in Oregon. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we were going to have to be careful not to infringe upon her yeah. uh, intellectual property. <laughs> His. Dave His. Buzon. Sorry. It's a, it's a great right. book. I just assumed it was another female Okay. Writer. Oh, another wild card, which we don't want. Yeah. What is that one? This one is the murder. Is there Uber driver? Oh, okay. Mm. I like that better than the Android thing. Oh, I don't really love it. I'm not even sure what All right, fine. Is. Yeah. Keep, keep okay. the Uber driver. Keep them in your shirt. All right. Okay. What do we so have? now we just need people. We need who people. are our characters? Former football players who are suffering the effects of CTE. Oh, all right. <laughs> CTE so. is concussion. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, the brain. traumatic brain okay. injury. Okay. okay. So we have the so former football TBI, players. CT is what CTE. it turns into. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, the murder is the sex. Uber driver. And then we're at the last working timber mill yep. in and Montana. I don't know anything okay. about timber mills. I don't either. But I read the book, so well, maybe I know now. A lot of times they are they go by water. Yep. Right. The it's like a log flume, right? Yeah, Isn't that what a log flume brings came from, right? Oh, the lumber. Okay. So, so think of Disneyland on the log flume ride. <laughs> awesome. That's where I, you know, that's where I learn everything. It's my reference point. So where are these football players coming from? Are they from all over? Did they all play in the same team? Um, these, are, these are the questions. Uh maybe there's a convention uh for these people who have suffered traumatic brain injuries okay i'm thinking of ballers did you guys see yeah, ballers? hbo yeah okay so maybe they're you know going to a financial convention to figure out you know how to preserve their money because they got brain problems and okay. they need to mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're getting a little spotty yep. yeah yeah all right and they're meeting at a timber mill to do this maybe it's a also a hotel there oh i like that the timber mill hotel that's fun like converted into a hotel yeah I mean that's it's kitschy. <laughs> that, that would draw some people in, and yeah. and you're out in the middle of nowhere, but it's still like a resort mm -hmm. kind of place. Mm -hmm. Maybe a hunting Mill resort. Ooh, yeah. hunting! They're yeah. on a hunting trip, and they've all got brain injuries. That won't end badly. <laughs> <laughs> They're on a like, hunting usually, trip, and but... usually like strong aggression is like one of the symptoms of it. Perfect. <laughs> Lack okay. of control but the over Uber one's driver anger is their murder. The Uber driver. Yeah. Uber. Well, I mean, a Montana Uber driver could absolutely murder somebody. We First, we got to figure out who gets murdered. Oh, it's just one person. Not I don't all know. I mean, it could, be, it could be one of those kind of like sleepaway camp situations where one by one they're getting murdered. By the Uber driver? It turns out to be the Uber driver. Yeah. Okay. Maybe they all, uh, it was a long trip from the airport and they were all a jerk to this Uber driver. Mm. And so the Uber driver has a beef. And well, I like, thought maybe they're hunting and they all have guns and they're losing their minds and he's afraid of them. <laughs> True that. Uh, but why is the Uber driver there? Why is he hunting with them? Well, I think maybe we just forget about the Uber driver after he drops them off. And uh, so they're in the woods, they're hunting, 
and you know you could have some oh, pretty good suspense that's true out there uh Maybe everybody's after armed their money and he yeah i don't know he finds out they're all rich former football players and he wants their money because what's his get their money yeah hmm. did they bring a bunch of cash to hide their money in an old timber mill no that'd be crazy gold Gold that they they thought they found. Oh, ooh, I know. There's gold in them. Their hills. Um, <laughs> there is a treasure that these guys found out about at this timber mill. Oh, but they're not wise enough to not tell everybody they know. Of, uh, not, but not tell the Word Uber. Gets they told out. the well, Uber driver about. They're just yeah. talking to each other in the back and not thinking that he's listening. Yes, and they're trying to. Like, make sure that they remember by yes. telling each other. But the Uber driver has to murder them in order to get all that money to himself. I like it. I do, too. So he drives yeah. them into the woods, drives them apart, and then slowly kills them one by one so that he can take their money. He, he might not even have to work that hard because these are these are aggro former football players yeah. that are hunting together. I like it. Can I pitch a name for this? Yeah. yeah. Splintered. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Very good. <laughs> so there we have it. That was our, our Mad Lib writing lab. We just mm -hmm. we just wrote a, a story that will certainly be a book and then a movie. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my friend who wrote uh, the one about Sasquatch would be interested in this nice. idea. I like mm -hmm. Fool's so right Bloom better, path. but you know, whatever. Fool's Fool's Bloom. Bloom. <laughs> ah. yeah, Splinter is good too. Like one word thing. I'm, I, we did a good job. Good. Yeah. It's okay. going to be a great book. Good. I can't wait to read it. Good little writing set. <laughs> uh, this has been great talking yeah. to you, Kim. And, and uh, the book is What Happens in Montana. And I would encourage you to buy it. It is, uh, it's available widely now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. not hard to find. Yeah. Michelle's going to hold it up. It there we should go. be at Country Bookshelf by now, too. So yes. I need to go in and I love how they put their little copies. bookmarks in there on I their favorite know. spot. All right. Yeah. And maybe I can link a website that has future events yes. so that people yes. can find Kim -McCollum it. Kim-McCollum.com. Pretty Great. easy. Has it all. Very cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. We'll, Thank you. We'll stay tuned for your next writing project. Working on it. Can't yep. wait to hear what happens. <laughs> all right. Have a nice rest of your day. Just I don't know. I just got done. Just grab it, I just got know. done with work, you guys. <laughs> I don't even know where I am. I need hair and makeup. <laughs> where are they?